<laughs> hey, welcome to lesson 17, the tower, the northern face of the cube of space and the letter P right here at the bottom right corner. P means mouth in Hebrew. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the pay of our creator. The opposites associated with the tower key are sin and grace. The tower key is the energy and the planet Mars. It is the key of the second Second chakra, just above the world key, above the spine, along the spine. And on the three by seven layout, it is the second stage of spiritual unfoldment. The spiritual function associated with this key is called spiritual awakening. And it's called the exciting intelligence. So that's interesting. Spiritual awakening is definitely never a dull experience. That's for sure. So the north side of the cube is the place of darkness. Its archangel is associated with Uriel, which means flame of God or lamp of God. Now, recall how we just left the sun key on the southern face, and the sun had 16 rays. The tower key is the 16th tarot key and shows the number six, which is the number of the sun on the tree, operating through the agency of self-consciousness, or the number one. This key will wake us up on the path. So let's get right into reading this exciting key. Uh, please unmute yourself one at a time and just state what occurs to you. The tree is above on the right hand corner going towards the sun. Upper right, yeah. Yes, Upper. right there. Hmm? There's the same pattern that we were just looking at in those coming out of the sun, that, uh, going down the body. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the path of the flaming sword here, right? That's what it's called, okay. Yeah. When you call it the flaming sword, the sword is the discrimination. Yeah, discernment, right? Yes. Y yes. And the lover's key. I have a question about the clouds on the cards. Uh huh. Because for some reason, I thought the clouds always had the gray in them, meaning um, a little bit of negative or, you know, danger or thought or something like that. And yet, um gray is a good color so i'm not mm -hmm. sure but even the last card has a little bit of gray in it they all have gray and the clouds do right so what does the gray mean here? well okay so the simplest the simplest the, the simplest way to first like answer your for yourself and the direction you want to to initially go is you want to look at what color on the tree of life, what color Sephiroth is the color that you see in the key. So on the tree, the color gray is the second Sephiroth of Hokma or wisdom. Right. So everything gray in all of the tableaus refer directly to the the second sphere of hokma okay so that's the way where you want to take your thoughts and you want to think about that sphere what it is is the 
the, the sphere of Hokma is all 12 signs of the zodiac, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it means wisdom. And it, the reason it's wisdom is gray is the combination between white and black. Okay. It's where it's where they're balanced. So the gray in the clouds is never the stormy weather or anything like well, that. Well, well, there's certainly a lot of like activity going on here, right? This looks yeah. pretty tumultuous. Mm -hmm. So it it's it's how it occurs to you. It's okay. it's how it occurs to you because what the keys do is they bring out what is in you. So follow that train of thought because you cannot really interpret it incorrectly, especially if you just stay with what's occurring to you. Okay. But we always look for what's white first because that's the crown of the tree. It's the beginning of the tree of life. And these clouds are kind of have a white edge, almost like the silver lining, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, for the first time ever in seeing this card, <clears throat> those clouds now look like smoke to me. Oh, you've never seen them that way. Uh -uh. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, kinda, yeah. That's cool. Yes. Like puffs of smoke. How, how did you see yes. them before, Michael? As clouds. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see that too. The smoke. Mm -hmm. I always saw them as smoke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, good there, for you. <laughs> there's a whole lot of fire going on here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of fire in this part. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of burning up. You got the 12 signs of the zodiac over there on the left, the little. Yeah. You know, right. Right here. Yeah. And yeah. yep, and the tree of life. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So 12. Is that a jester crown on the blue so figure? 22. Right here. The hat on the other figure. Oh, right here. Oh, that's a good observation. So it is a crown of sorts. Um, it's an upside could... down crown. Right. It is upside down. And it looks kind of like a yellow version of the high priestess crown a little bit. There's something the... oh, on her hands, excuse me. Yep. Right. On What's the it? palm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Right there. Right here, yes. What is that? Well... It doesn't really look like a symbol very much. It just looks like. Mm -hmm. It's suggestive. Um, but what um, uh, comes to me is, I don't know if this is accurate, but I'm thinking like the, the spine and the Kundalini awakening for some reason. Because okay. of the, the tower, I'm thinking of this as a spine and when you wake up, it's just a shock to your whole freaking system and you can't. <laughs> you're like what the fuck is going on and you're like everything that you thought was once what is not the same excuse my language by the way but, <laughs> yeah blowing, so, blowing your brains right there at the top so that, this is what it reminds me of <laughs> your mind is just blown open that's what i'm that's what i'm feeling when i see this card yeah okay <laughs> and and with the Yodes, you've got all 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet present. That is them. correct. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And she, they both have red, red shoes. Yeah. So active. Mm -hmm. And they're made of red and blue clothing. Mm -hmm. And they're upside down like the hanged man, in a yeah. sense. Their world has top has tipped over, and we have the the tower is made up of bricks, right? Not considered natural stone, and it sits on 
a rock, which is natural stone. But mm, nice. And there's nobody catching them. <laughs> <laughs> Deep draw. Yeah, this is an exciting key for sure. <laughs> and all of the all of the upset comes from the sun. My hand. That which is causing all the havoc is coming from the sun. Mm -hmm. And we just studied the sun key. We did, exactly. The two little children and everybody was happy. Yeah, right. That is yeah. correct. And it's kind of like the sun will lead you home if you let it. That's what I'm getting. The sun with the two children, and then here yep. the sun is going whack with a sword. I love it. Well, it's like the number itself, right? Six is the number of sun, and it's operating through self-consciousness. So you're becoming conscious. Yes. And what you thought, because we our truth is what we think it is. Each person has their truth based on their whole life. And it's just saying our, the truth is coming out of the sun, period. Yes. That peace when you're in the sun. So this is like the ultimate worry, anxiety, and fear <laughs> getting tossed out. Yeah, one of the uh, old Hebrew names for Mars or the planet or the, the fifth sphere of volition, which is Mars, which is associated with this key is Pashad. It means fear. It's that energy. It's that, that, that raw life force, you know, in the lower parts of our body that just get... A, a lot of energy is released in this key. Mm -hmm. A lot. Okay. So I'm going to move forward. Thank you, everyone. The tower here shows the self-conscious and subconscious aspects of our mind. And they're falling from their tower of isolation. This tower is the whole construct of the lower mind that we have carefully constructed both consciously and subconsciously or unconsciously. It is the whole construct that we have created that supports the perception that we are all separate beings, literally from the sun and from the rest of the world, our whole solar system. And that perception is simply completely untrue. It's only a matter of time before life steps in and shows us how not separate we are from all life itself. The lightning bolt coming from the sun is what has activated the destruction of the tower. And it's overthrowing this false crown which is the sense of our separate self. Now, remember the opposites associated with this key are sin and grace. The sin or error is the self-conscious and subconscious thinking they are running things. And they've forgotten who they are. You know, a lot of the tarot keys will show the Trinity, right? Well, they haven't really weren't really paying attention to the Trinity up here. And they got a good reminder. It's like, oh, <laughs> this this wakes them up as to who's actually in control. The grace aspect of this key is the sun itself steps in to destroy these false sense of I of these false self-identifications that we have. 
this key in the three by seven layout and the order of the arcana follows the deceiver key where we sometimes put ourselves in some form of hell now don't understand don't be hard on yourself for doing this or like making a tower of, and a separate sense of self this is simply part of the path for everyone anyone who incarnates into the world we pretty much are going to go through this um, it's easy to be lulled into this way of behaving and believing just by being in the world and the lower vibrations of the world and it's endless stories that it tells sometimes i think of these stories as bedtime stories these are the stories about virtually everything that occurs in our life that we believe we believe the stories are what are real the awakening is waking up to just how reactionary we have become to our story that we have become hypnotized into seeing all of our life through. This is the whole point of the word, his story, history. This key is an um, inevitable part of the spiritual path, one by which we grow and wake up from our little sleep. And it shows us the way out of our personal hell and false beliefs that we hold and sometimes imagine that is what is real when we forget who we really are when we're in deep immersion into the tower key we see most clearly what we thought was real is not real at all and who we thought we were <laughs> we are shown most clearly that we were not who we thought we were at all So let's muse on this together. This is a three by seven layout and the second column of spiritual awakening. And it shows where the, the tower falls. So I would like everyone to please just state what they see in this layout, what occurs to them. I see a process of of falling apart and comp contemplation and then uh, greater awareness. Okay. I would mirror exactly what you just said, Dina. Oh, okay. So the top key is the high priestess. Go ahead, Teresa. <laughs> I was going to say, um, the first card makes me think of willpower or creation. The second one makes me think of awakening. And the third one makes me think of dark night of the soul. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Cool. All right. Nice. All right, those, all. those are all right in, in, in yes. Those are all connected. I see the high priestess at the point of complete stillness. Memory, everything is, everything there is just remembering, but she's not yeah. moving, just yeah. remembering. She's not participating. The hermit is participating. He's leading with the, with the light. And if we realize then that light is actually the star in the next picture, it's coming down from the hermit. He's guiding us very calmly, not to nothing's crazy, but the very guidance, nice. the guidance mm -hmm. is causing us to realize that this, the sin of forgetting who we are. Ah, uh, that's so well articulated. 
just forgetting. It's so simple. If we remember that we're all stars and sons of God. Yes. And line ourselves up with that which is all around us. When that light shines on us, then all will be calm like with the high priestess. But instead, we have... As in the previous key, key 15, we've attached ourselves and not removed our chains. And so remembering who we are leaves us no place to go. When you fall out of the tower, you notice they're not landing anywhere. <laughs> right. You remember who you are and the world is, is this world is not the real world. You can't land in it anymore, but you have lined yourself up in remembering what you are, and then everything is yours. It's a different world. The high priestess has the same crown as the falling figure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Except the high priestess is gray for wisdom and upright. And represents the moon. Mm -hmm. The waxing and waning and full moon. Yes. So an interesting um, point, the high priestess, the opposites associated with the high priestess are peace and strife. So peace is remembering who we truly are, and strife <laughs> is when like... we forget. It's that simple. Yeah. It is that simple. The tower key will actually help us remember who we are. It looks scary to some people sometimes, and sometimes people confuse excitement with fear. That's a very common um thing people confuse in their emotions right but remember this is the exciting intelligence uh teresa brought up the will the hermit is the intelligence of will so at the top we see the high priestess has the primary function of memory and the hermit shows us the real one self above the tower as Margot so, so uh, stated so so elegantly. Thank you. So again, all right. Time spent with this trinity is really fruitful for you to contemplate these keys together or any of the trinities together. Okay, when you're fun when you're focused on one aspect. Of, of the seven aspects on the three by seven layout. So I'm gonna say this about the spiritual path. If you could just make it, summarize it in a nutshell. The spiritual path is just simply one of re-identification of the self. It's that, just from, from dissolving or or letting go of identifying with who you're not and remembering your real self. It's that simple. It's the self that we were before we came into this world, the self we are now behind the veil of this world, and the self we will be when this world is only a memory. That is what is speaking the word into our experience here in the tower key. That is the sun there is a symbol of our self. Now, we just recently went over the, the path of the flaming sword. Sometimes this is called the lightning strike on the tree of life. It begins in the crown of Keter and descends through each success, successive Sephiroth all the way down to Malkut. 
This is the direct transmission of the living word of the Logos or the Son itself. My word shall not return unto me void. So in the Tower Key, we see the same mythology here as the Tower of Babel, where the little mind decided they would build a tower to the throne of God. Remember, in tarot, there are no accidents. There are zero accidents in the Book of Wisdom. Everyone brought up the 22 yodes. There's 10 making up the tree of life pattern on the side with the subconscious. On side of the self-conscious, it are the 12 remaining yodes that make up the 12 signs of the zodiac. Now, if you study this key carefully, you'll see that there are exactly 22 levels of stone or brick constructed all the way up to the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So that's interesting. As there are 22 letters in the Hebrew Aleph Bait and 22 keys in the major arcana. So the error in the story of the Tower of Babel was in believing that they had a personal will that was separate to and separate from the real will. That is why the tower falls beneath the hermit key in the three by seven layout. Because the hermit is the intelligence of will the true will. And they're just standing there holding that light, which is the truth. It's like Margot said, that we are all sons. When we stand in the truth of our sonship, our being, then the light that you shine becomes this for other structures in the world. And it just naturally dissipates the, the errors. Again, sin and grace. Life has a will of its own. And that will of life is our true will. The more we can align our attention and focus with that one will, the more life appears to manifest in harmony with the one. This is the idea behind miracles. As the master said, of myself, I do nothing. The father within me does all things. Speaking of father, let's look at the formula one more time. Book of Wisdom. If you weren't here for this lesson, this is the very most simple formula in tarot for the word father, or ab, aleph, and bait. Studying these keys together will bring forth from within you what is referred to as father. And in its most simple interpretation, you have the breath of the super consciousness in aleph, combined with the attention and focus of the self-conscious mind. So when we can bring our self-conscious mind into receptive attention, we're, we're doing both. We're giving attention and we're being receptive to the highest within us or above the breath of the superconsciousness we come into contact with what's called the Father. Some would refer to this as the great mind within which we all exist. This greater mind of the Father comes to us through our Son. 
And as the master said, none, none come unto the father, but by me. So the activities that you will see and experience in the tower key releases lots of power and energy that have been temporarily contained within these structures of the mind that are seen as the tower. As these outworn structures that are not useful anymore are, are destroyed, energy is released. And that energy can be used for construction of the inner bodies and the inner vehicles and spiritual development in other ways or virtually anything you want to direct this energy to. The idea is to have our activities to be more and more in harmony with our true will. On the simple tree, this is, is what this makes up the entire lower mental plane. And it connects the sphere of the intellect and the sphere of desire. It's that simple. The spiritual awakening here is where we hear the voice of our real self. And this is unmistakable. I'll just state this for you. In this key, you experience this key and this word spoken to you, you will know it. You won't have to second guess it. This is a clear experience. Now, I'll just say this. Spiritual awakening is not always easy. And it's definitely not all rainbows and unicorns, as they say. But it is real. And it is what we really, really long for. Our soul and our heart will only be satisfied with what is real. This longing for the real is what sets us on a spiritual path to begin with. The tower will help us let go of the things that are no longer in our best interest. And that is the grace aspect of this key. I like how this flame here reminds me of a heart. Eli? Yeah. What about the uh, male and female figures being uh, wisdom and understanding? Mm -hmm. Is there a correspondence to the tree of life, the Sephiroth? Well, yeah, Those figures? Always. always. There's always that correspondence, yes. Uh, the and, masculine and feminine. Right, right. The most simple, there, of course, is... Go ahead, Margo. Well, there are the... Yeah, in upside down. Right. Wisdom and understanding upside down. That's the sin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And this I like is how like, they're facing this is like the, go, on. go ahead. This is like the, uh, the failure of uh, the worldly wisdom and understanding is uh, unmasked and destroyed the self-will yeah. kind of the usurpation right. yeah exactly. well yeah because it doesn't work in essence it doesn't work yeah yeah well it's it's when you claim your understanding you know it's it, forgetting the ba you know where it comes from and your wisdom it, yeah it's a personal it, personal uh uh iterations of those things which which don't work right because it's not relying on god correct yeah, you can. that's that's a whole tower of babel story isn't yes it? that's yeah, you know, it is you got man oh. usurping god's glory so to speak intelligence yeah. wisdom and understanding it's saying my will is greater than god's will and so you stand out there with an apple and you drop it and you will it to go up yeah. Good luck. Think yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Go up. I'm going to drop it. Yeah. Tells you the experience should clear that out. Yeah. It's 
it's interesting that the subconscious hands are facing uh, the viewer and the self-conscious are facing hers. They're like mirroring one another here yeah. as, as yeah. they're falling. Mm. Now, the good news is <laughs> that after this false sense of identity is is destroyed by the truth of the sun the next key in tarot is the key 17 the star so you got that to look forward to but it, it's it's nice to know you have something to look forward to there okay all right so as you meditate on this key each night for the next six nights. Just look at all the parts of it very, very clearly. And as you close your eyes and go to sleep, I want you to really, really visualize this letter, pay, and as much of the key as you can in detail. Really just see as much of it as you can. It's interesting there are three windows on fire and a shape of a triangle. And then I want you to listen carefully. Just listen within. When you open to this key, you will not miss the message. It will come very clearly to you. Welcome it. Recall the number 16 again shows the sun operating through the agency of the number one, our self-consciousness. And remember, you are always loved. And the tower key is a key of grace. And that's, Thank the, you. that's the 22 yodes floating around. That's, yes. that's how that's signified, that they're there for you, watching over you. Yes. yes. And the sun is still shining. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So enjoy your week. Thank you all for your presence and grace. This concludes lesson 17 of the Cuba Space, the tower. And the floor is now open for any questions or comments. I have a quote I'd like to read. Yeah. Uh, by Lewis Hyde, who wrote the book, The Gift. Uh, sorry, I, I just had it. <laughs> okay. When the will dominates, there is no gap through which grace may enter. Nice. Thank you, Nancy.